Welcome back. I am excited for today's video. Uh, I get to check out the Samsung Gear VR. As you know, I've got an Oculus Rift. I've had that for a while and I really like that. So I'm excited to try out the Gear VR and I can actually hold them up for you side by side here because I just happen to have them in the same room. So in my left hand is the Rift. In case you don't know the difference, this is the Gear VR. So there's some readily apparent differences just in the build. The straps on the Gear VR are, are mostly elastic, which is a little different. Um, but it looks like it'll give some really nice customization. You notice the Gear VR doesn't have any headphones attached to it, uh, which the Rift does. And obviously the Rift has a cable connecting it to the computer where the Gear VR is for mobile devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the Rift aside And we're going to take a look at the Gear VR. It comes with a nice little cover to protect your lenses because that is incredibly important. Uh, if you get your lenses scratched, it kind of sucks. So I, I recommend finding some lens protectors on Amazon. They've got several options, or not several. When I looked, I found about two or three. Um, but uh, there's some good options you can go with. Uh, as far as compatibility with phones, Looking into these, uh, this particular one has a USB-C uh, because thank you to Jim, my friend, um, from some other videos that you've seen him in. Um, he's letting me borrow his Gear VR and his Note 8 to make this video. Um, so this particular headset is USB-C. Looks like you can get an adapter for the micro USB if you have older phones. And the Gear VR is supposed to support back to the Galaxy Note 5 and the Galaxy S6. So you can do that with those devices. I would suspect the battery is going to die. Um, I played around with this a little bit, downloaded some apps to get ready for this video. And the battery on the Note 8 has done amazingly well. I've not really used the Note 8 at all. I'm on the Galaxy S7 as of making this video. Anyway, the Note 8 has done awesome, so really all you do is you slide the phone onto the port there, and then it has a little lock switch, and that seems to be the trick, that you lock that in, and then you press the phone in, the other end snaps down, and you are all set. Now, the, the Oculus Gear VR app has capability to screen capture what's going on on the phone. I'm going to try and do that. I tried it earlier. I had some issues. So hopefully this isn't going to mess up. Also a noticeable difference is the facial interface. You can see this one has kind of a soft microfiber interface. Let me grab my Rift real quick. Uh, my particular Rift, I know the Rift has like a more of a solid foam. My Rift has a really soft foam. And hopefully someday I'm going to upgrade to the hygienic foam option that it has like the... It's all, almost like a vinyl, not quite vinyl, um, that goes around the outside and it has foam inside so you can wipe it off when it's clean because it's really gross when somebody sweats like crazy uh, in your headset and then you put it on and it's just sopping wet with someone else's sweat. Really gross. Uh, another difference is the remote. This is the Gear VR remote. Um, it's pretty basic, pretty simple. And then this is the Oculus Touch for the Oculus Rift. So pretty clear differences in size, controls. The Touch has more buttons than the Gear VR remote. Uh, you can also see the Touch remote triggers have sensitivity to them where the gear vr remote trigger is just a button and then it has the trackpad instead of the control stick which i'm not sure if this trackpad is similar to the vive i've not gotten to try the vive yet i hope someday that um, i could try out the vive because i'd just be interested to see the difference but i think i would like the control stick over the touchpad um, i think it just helps to know exactly where you're going so anyway, um, we'll put this on and see if we can get our screen capture going and show you a few things about the Gear VR. A noticeable difference to me. So it's important to unlock the phone first. I'm going to turn on the Oculus VR app. Got the phone turned on. The Gear VR definitely 
fits a little different than the Rift. Where it's all elastic, it really kind of snugs it up against your face more and eliminates some of the light you can sometimes get through the nose. Not that it's an issue with the Rift, um, it's actually sort of convenient in my opinion, because you can look down through the nose to be able to find like your phone if you're trying to get on and uh, play with a friend, you can find your phone and text them without having to take the headset off. Um, now the elastic bands, they are pretty comfortable, but it, I feel like it does have feel like it's pulling the headset into my face more. Um, which, like I said, I feel like gives it a little bit better uh, uh, let's see gives it a little bit better seal against your your face um, but it's a little harder to keep it in focus it has a focus knob on the top to adjust that otherwise um, you have to adjust up and down to get things in focus which I find that on the edges of my view it's a little blurry I have to find the screen capture okay it says it's going hopefully we don't have any issues here um, so I just saw this within I'm gonna install this while we're doing this and hopefully it'll work so I went through and I I tried some of these so I'm I'm not gonna try all of them but we're like the alt space VR that just crashed on me twice so I'm not even gonna try it it looks like it could be cool but I don't know it didn't really work very well uh, so let's I'm gonna, uh, let's see I'm gonna start with the Samsung gallery oh I forgot uh, okay so Samsung gallery this is pretty much, I think, just looking at your own stuff. Yeah, you can look at your own photos. Uh, it looks like there's a 360 photo built in here, which is pretty cool. It's a theater. I feel like it put me in here backwards. I feel like I should be facing the other way. But, uh, nonetheless, it's, it's always interesting with, like, 360 cameras because it gives off this feeling that you're you're not actually in the room, you're looking at, it still feels like you're looking at a picture. Um, but we'll probably talk about that a little bit more. So let's, let's back out of this one. Something cool about the Gear VR is solving the issue of uh, headphones. With the Note 8, the headphone jack is easily accessible as long as your headphones don't have too big of a plug. So let me get those up here, and that's going to give it a way better experience for those of you who get this. Headphones. Otherwise, it's just playing out your phone's speaker, and it's not nearly as good. Okay, so next VR, it's kind of like a sports, a sports viewing app. So here's Monster Jam. Which is pretty cool, but I'm not a huge fan of when they do this, like, they give you a 180 view and not, not actual full 360. Also, it looks like he should be standing right next to me, but he looks really small. <laughs> he looks like a hobbit or something. Uh, no offense, man. Uh... Cool truck, I guess. Check out a little hockey. It's supposed... The point of VR, in my opinion, is to make you feel like you're there. You're, like, right in the middle of everything. Which, this looks pretty good, but I still feel like I'm far away. Although I've not really watched hockey, so that's okay. kind of cool. That hoop is really hard to focus on. I don't know if it's just too close. It's cool, but it's the same thing. They look so short. I know basketball players really are super tall. They would dwarf me. Because I'm average size. Average height. Oh, that's really cool. 
I mean, what they're doing is cool. It almost feels like an animation because the people are so small. Uh, Epic Roller Coaster. This is one they have on the Oculus Rift, which I've tried, and it's so... It's pretty cool. Um, some of these roller coasters are a little too crazy, just to the point where it's, it's almost absurd. And one problem I did have with it is that, depending on the cart you select, sometimes when you come up over the hill, you can't actually, like, see past the cart. So it kind of loses some of the, the intensity of, oh my goodness, here, I'm going to come falling over this thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I thought I was selecting that to be able to select the cart. Never mind. Anyway, we'll go with this cart. Uh, start... What I like is, um, as you move your thumb around the touchpad, your thumb moves with it and it looks really good. The downside is that the remote in VR is just a fixed point. Um, so it's not actually, you, you know, it doesn't actually track where it is. So if I stretch my hand out here, the remote is sitting here in VR. Or same if I go this way, it's about right here where my bicep is. Um, as far as the roller coaster app, now that we're going, it's it's pretty good. It looks it looks exactly the same as in the Rift, as far as I can tell. Um, just, oh, those are those rocks are pretty good. I think some of it is just how absurd, but the heights when you go up and the ground goes away from you, it gives me that sensation of you're you're just really high up. Which I like roller coaster apps because I don't really like roller coasters in real life. Oh, and that rock. Okay. One thing I do notice is that, I mean, this is impressive for running this on a phone. Um, sometimes it gets just a little bit jumpy, which kind of kills the effect. Uh, okay. Oop. Here goes that, you're about to go over the cliff's edge feeling. Oh, uh, which, oh, gets me for a second. But once you get going, um, it sort of loses the effect a little bit just because you're not actually feeling any of the gravity. Oh, the jump. The jump's pretty good, except that it had to correct itself. But right here where it's going, it's about to go straight up. As I'm just sitting here watching, when I focus on the track, it just, I just feel like I'm just kind of going and it's a mild taper, but when I turn, clearly when I turn around, I'm looking all straight down. So it kind of throws, throws me a little bit. Like sometimes it's great, other times it's not so great. It is really fun when you go on a big loop to look up, which like I said, I am not a roller coaster person. Um, at least in real life, in video games and on the computer, I uh, feel a lot more brave. <laughs> Who doesn't, though? So here, you can't see over the edge of the cart, which kind of throws off the sensation a little bit. But it's cool, because we're going to drop down in this tunnel, and then I think we're going to pop out of there. that's pretty cool that's weird but you can probably see it gets a little jumpy now I don't want to spend a ton of time in this so um, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of it let's do uh, Ocean Rift I haven't really tried Ocean Rift aside from getting this set up I realize this is the demo um, dolphins I'm just going to start with the great white shark because sharks kind of freak me out. I don't live anywhere by the ocean, so it's totally foreign. Oh, oh, that's creepy. That is so creepy. <laughs> that big old shark, that's so freaky. I do not like how it just disappears into nothing. Oh my goodness. 
What are you doing? Ugh, oh. Yeah. Okay. The first time I tried this, I didn't see the shark coming. It was like only the second time I saw the shark, and it scared the crap out of me. So that's Ocean Rift. That one's pretty cool. You could get a jump scare out of your friends on that one. And then uh, we'll take a quick look at Calm. I like Calm, the people who've put Calm together. Um, have done a great job. I used Calm in college. I downloaded that on my phone to meditate on occasion when things got really stressful just to try and help stay calmed down for all the things you have to do. The funny thing about that though is on the phone you're just using your speaker and so it's it's ideal because it's really minimal uh, stimulus in your environment. Um, so I thought it was funny when I actually just recently saw that uh, Oculus had announced that Calm released their app on the Oculus store uh, because you know, with all the time in front of screens that we spend with our phones, tablets, computers, TVs, and now VR, it almost seems ironic to put Calm into VR just because you're bombarding your eyes with light. I mean, this is a beautiful mountain scene here, and I really wonder where they took it. Um, but again, I my complaint is, is this, this 180 field of view, and then I turn around and it's just calm it's just purple and blue which I feel like kind of defeats the purpose but I realize in calm you're not supposed to be looking around at everything you're just supposed to be relaxing and closing your eyes um, but the other thing about that is trying to meditate with a VR headset on doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you have the physical stress of the headset on your head and face so it doesn't make sense I mean I think the pull Calm up on your computer and listen to it or use it on your phone, that's great. But I don't totally understand the purpose of using it in VR. Um, now this scene has some, some of that like warble to it that when you look around it just is weird. Another thing I noticed with the Gear VR is where it doesn't have external tracking. It looks like everything is based on your head position. So as I move around, the entire VR world moves with me, um, which doesn't happen with the Rift because you have external sensors. So when you move your head, your head is moving in the VR space, which I obviously like that more. Um, we'll check out the last scene here. It looks like ocean. Welcome oh, that's nice. Welcome. That's nice. I like that. Uh, the weird thing is I feel like I'm buried in the sand up to my, feels like right about here, up to my, like my upper stomach, lower chest area. But the uh, ocean is really pretty. There's, looks like there's even people walking over there. I wonder if you wait long enough if they make it this way. It really puts things in perspective that I am a very small person and Really, the Earth is mostly ocean, and so it's it's so interesting. This is just a teeny tiny bit. Anyway, uh, we'll go home. I think within really is the last one we have to do. So the Gear VR, as I was looking through the Oculus Store to see what exactly it has in it, it looks like it's clearly more experience-based rather than games. Uh, with the Oculus Rift, I love first-person shooters in the Oculus Rift because I feel like that's where it really shines because you can look down a gun and look down the sights um, and it's just it's just really cool to do that and I'm gonna do more videos with the Rift since I own that one and I'm just borrowing this I kinda have to do a rush job on this uh, let's and I don't, I don't even know let's do this Batman experience Initiating that playlist. Welcome to the Bat Cave. The Lego Bat Cave. VR this would be cool if they did like Batman in real life. Peter tells me you think you've got what it takes to be my sidekick. Well, unless you're rocking huge biceps and a shredded nine pack, I suggest you turn around and leave this superheroing to me. <laughs> 
I'm Batman. Ah, uh, I mean virtual reality in virtual reality. It's like VR inception. <laughs> Don't you love the feeling of wind in your cow? Baby comes fully loaded too. This is pretty cool. He's like n barely looking at the road. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. What was that, a chicken? That's super weird. But for the time being, just gonna gently <laughs> Alright, that's pretty cool. It's weird to see Legos that look like they're as big as me. Is your face getting itchy in that headset? That's what I feel like in my bat cow. Uh oh. Looks like the bat signal. So the Joker's cruising for a bruising. The view from up here is wild. What is this, 2006? Come on, guys. Have some respect for yourselves. I mean, this beat is pretty catchy. You know what? I'm gonna dance, but only so the rest of you don't feel left out. Hey guys, remember the bat two Z? That's right. That's <laughs> big bats. Hey, who turned off the sim? All right. Thanks, Batman. I appreciate it. That's really everything I want to show you with the Gear VR. Um, several of the video apps look very similar. Again, when when people are using uh, 360 cameras to make VR stuff. It's just not, it doesn't quite have the same, it doesn't quite have the same level of immersion. And I don't know exactly what the difference is. I mean, maybe it's building an app around, around intentionally trying to be VR. The, the Oculus Gear VR home room has that issue where, where the VR world is operating around the headset. So if you move to the side, your entire world moves with you, um, which I, I don't like that so much. But the Gear VR, I think, is great if you're looking to just try some stuff out, have a good time, show some friends. Uh, the cool thing about the Rift, where you hook it up to the computer, is you can display on the TV or your computer monitor what the person wearing the Rift is seeing. So it makes it way more fun for a group, whereas the Gear VR, you're just kind of stuck with what you've got. But like I said, it's a great entry into the, to the VR world if you've got a phone that can handle it pretty well. It's cool. It costs $130 to get the headset and the remote. And then if you already have a phone that can handle it, that's not so bad. If you're trying to buy a phone that is going to be able to handle it, then that's not so ideal because, you know, you're looking at the Note 8, you're going to spend probably $450, $500. Um, again, as I'm making this video, then you buy the headset, you're looking at anywhere from $600 to $700, which puts you a little over halfway to getting a computer that can handle a Rift, um, which if, if you can afford that, I would recommend that because the experience is phenomenal. Then again, it's not nearly as mobile as the Gear VR as well. So if you want mobility, uh, then the Gear VR is a good way to go. Uh, they also have the Oculus Go. I think that runs $200. It looks really similar to the Gear VR, but it's a standalone unit. If you don't have a phone that can handle it, that's probably the, the quickest way to get into VR experiences. I've heard that with some of the cheap headsets you can get from like China, that it's just not a great experience. I've never tried it. I've actually wanted to try the Google Cardboard. I know it's really cheap, just to see how good Google Cardboard is. It's so, so simple and Clearly that would be the cheapest way to get into it, but I have no idea how good it is. And in 2019, Oculus is supposed to be releasing the Oculus Quest, which is looks like kind of a kind of a revamped version of the Oculus Rift, but it's supposed to be a standalone unit. I suspect the big downfall there is that you're limited to the Oculus Store. I try to get as many games in Steam as possible just because it gives me more freedom. So unless the game is only offered exclusively in the Oculus Store, then I'll get it that way. Most of the games, when you get them through Steam, are going to be compatible with the Vive as well. So if I ever had a chance to get my hands on the HTC Vive, then I would have games to play. I wouldn't have to go into the Vive Store 
and buy games there too because then it's just ridiculous it's you bought super hot in the oculus store you bought it in the vive store you can buy it in steam you can buy it all over the place then if in the future i i wanted to go with the vive and not the oculus and i sold my oculus or something then i've still got games it's not a total loss so uh there you have it that's the uh that's the samsung gear vr great way to get into vr um, I'd love to try the Oculus Go if if I could to compare the two um, and then hopefully again the Oculus Quest when it comes out. That'd be awesome. So th so the Gear VR really is, is pretty cool. It's pretty impressive what you can do with a mobile phone with the device you carry in your pocket. So yeah, I'm going to quit rambling. That's the end of the video. Take it easy and we'll see you guys next time.